Now we're coming out. We're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. And uh, I have asked Mike Riley to lead us in prayer and a pledge. Our loving, most gracious Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for another beautiful day you've given us. Father, we just thank you for blessing us in so many different ways. And we thank you for loving us and keeping us and just watching over us. Father, we, we pray at this time that you be with each and every one of us on this council, Father, that we take into consideration the issues that we have at hand and have the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to make the decisions that will benefit everyone, Father, in a way that is justifiable and equitable in every aspect that we make those decisions for. Father, we, we ask you to be with those that have been affected by the virus, those that have lost their lives. And Father, we just ask you to be with all the families that have been affected in that negative way. Father, we again thank you for being our God and watching over us and just keeping us every day of our lives. And Father, we just thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We pray all these things in Christ's most holy name. Amen. To the American flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To our Texas flag, to honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Mike. Okay, at this time, this is the opportunity for the public to address council, dialogue, deliberation, or discussion with council members on items that are not on the agenda, is prohibited by law. Time for each speaker is limited to three minutes. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carried. Okay. City Council will consider the request of Ballinger Memorial Hospital to use the community center for their annual blood drive on October 6, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. 
Okay, City Council will consider the request of the City Park Board to use the City Park on the first weekend in December for a barbecue cook-off. Mm -hmm. I uh, um, uh, we think we can run another cook-off on December 4th and 5th. We're going to do it in conjunction with the police department and sheriff's department to run a toy drive at the same time as we have the cook-off. And uh, it won't be like hot air hell, it's going to be straight cook off, no corn on it, no nothing, straight cook off. So we just want to come see if we can uh, bring down the park for that weekend. So, uh, I spoke with the sheriff on this. Um, they'll, they're glad that we're going to do it, give them all the help that they can get to for their annual toy drive that they have every year. So I know in the past, last year I believe, their big, biggest funder. Um, was not helping them anymore. And so this will help bring in more toys for everybody in Lawrence County. So they have the support of the police department and the sheriff's office? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Do I have a motion? I have a motion that we approve the use of the park for the uh, cook off. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Okay, motion carries. Mm -hmm. City Council will consider an ordinance to amend the November 3rd, 2020 election order to add the dates of October 17th, October 24th, and October 31st, 2020, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. for voting early by personal appearance. And this has been initiated by the state? No, it was by the election, Rolls County elections. Just and then the she emailed us uh, last two weeks, two, two weeks ago and said now she's going to have three Saturdays. Open the 17th and 24th and the 31st from 8 to 2 and ask us to add it to our election. <laughs> That's in conjunction and including the rest of the week. That they yeah, exactly. She decided that she said she didn't, she was so busy she didn't realize that she had to add the dates of the election. So she added the dates of the election and then we added the dates of the election. So basically, you have the same ordinance, but just amending. Okay. I'll make that motion to uh, amend the ordinance to comply with the October 17th, the 24th of October, and the 31st of October from 8, to 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. for voting early by personal mm -hmm. appearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. A, City Council will consider an ordinance amending the minor curfew ordinance by prohibiting minors from being in any public place during school hours. Go ahead. I'll do this here. Do what? Okay. So. According to Title 18, U.S. Code, Section 242, deprivation of rights under color of law, it is not the city council's right to say when and where we can have our children. That is a right reserved for parents, federally and by the state of Texas. I can take my child to a bar, buy them a beer, and hand it to them, because Texas says we can. Okay? Now, for those of y'all that aren't lawyers, because you know, I think Pat Seal is one here. Color of law refers to an appearance of legal power to act that may operate in violation of the law. Okay. Y'all are acting under the color of law because you make ordinances for the town. You know, y'all are legal representatives. I have gone ahead and spoke to the Sheriff's Department, who then went and spoke to the Texas Rangers, and they told me to go ahead and contact the U.S. Attorney's Office and look. I went ahead and called them. I gave them all the information. They are pushing it up to the U.S. Attorney's Office in Washington, D.C., under their Civil Rights Commission, to set a precedence for, you know, any time the city steps in and infringes upon parents' rights. <laughs> With that being said, in the meantime, if y'all do go ahead and pass this, under Title 42, U.S. Code, Section 1983, it outlines legal recourse for citizens to file against municipalities, county, state, or federal government for rights infringements. 
which means if y'all go ahead and pass this, I will be getting an attorney and I'll be trying to file an injunction against it. Thank you. Pretty much summed it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's good with me. I think that's what everybody was kind of going yeah. for. Speech, y'all. Could you give us an outline of why we're doing this, Brian? Okay. Historically, this is not anything new. Uh, it's not anything that, that dates back 50, 60, 70 years. This is something that's been having to come up with municipalities across the state and across the country over the last 15 to 25 years. Uh, Unfortunately, we find ourselves or have found ourselves in different parts of the state and we're starting to see it here and this is why this is being brought up now to strike up a conversation with you, the parents, the community as a whole. Is that unfortunately, there are members of our youth that don't want to conform to the rules of going to school following the, the rules at school and end up getting expelled or suspended or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, and what they do is they end up out on the streets in the middle of the day with 19, 20, and 25 year olds and engaging in other activities, uh, vandalism, graffiti, uh, burglary of buildings, so on and so forth. And so this is the tool that that we only that law enforcement has to really handle uh, the juveniles on this matter. The Supreme Court has ruled and held that a Terry stop in and of itself cannot be used for the sole purpose of crime prevention. So, with that being the case, just because you're walking down the street, unless you're out at a suspicious hour or a place, you know, doing something that's uncharacteristic. We can't just stop and patch down and demand who you are and why you're there. That goes against Terry. And so getting back to this, we're, we're not after those students that are homeschooled. We're not after those that are doing virtual. You know, and like I was made aware of, I, I, I don't know about Olfen. I, I've heard the name of it a couple of times. I didn't know they had the option Fridays. Yes, they did. You know, so, this is the way to engage the community in conversation on how you want your community police. Okay? If we're not out after your kids, we're not saying they can't be out in public. There's, they can still be in their yard, they can be in the neighbor's yard, they can be over at their friend's yard, and still be exempt from the statute. There's a list of defenses in here. But yet we want to hear from you and see how you feel about it because this is not anything that this has already been tried and tested and through the, all the various courts and everything else that are perfectly constitutional. And uh, so it's not an overreach because you, you just didn't know, you don't know what we, what we have written here. And I understand that. How many kids are we talking about? That you're going to limit them all? No. How many that's, not what that's, that's not what I'm saying. But that's how we it's not real. That's the that's how we But see, yeah. this, 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 okay. this is why we're here to have the conversation. I'm not saying this is a one and done reading of the ordinance. The only way we can get the most conversation at one time is to put it on the agenda and the community. And, and y'all turned out, thank you. That's what we have to have in order to make an informed decision about an ordinance. This is a legislative body. Just like the Senate, just like the House, they have to hear from their constituents on what they want to happen or not happen. I can tell you right now, I, I read this and I already got some phone calls and I already knew because I've been through this before. And it was it was in Muleshoe, and I mean, it was the most well-attended city council meeting we had in Muleshoe's history, is when we started talking about the daytime purview. And the only way we know how to modify it and discuss it and see if it's even going to go to a vote is to hear from y'all and get your input on what y'all want it to say or you don't want it to say. And so, I'm sorry, go ahead. Can I say something as a school teacher? Yes, ma'am. Um, my concern is, like you said, with the virtual kids that we have right now or the homeschool kids, um, my other concern is we have kids that leave school early to go work. We have uh, we have kids that will go to the store with their class, and I'm sure that's different because they're with the teacher. 
But I, I think it would be problematic to just blanket say kids can't be in public during mm -hmm. school hours because we do have a lot of kids that that would affect. Well, and like and I that's said, from a school teacher, not a mom. Sure. You know, well, like, well, and Mountain, Mountain's an open campus, right? And lunch. Yeah. And so that, that opens up that. That could have going anywhere. And like you mentioned, the work right. issue, that is that is a defense to prosecution anyway. And so, like I said, there's a lot of these defenses that are already built into the ordinance. But like I said, there, this is not a one and done ordinance. This is this is put out because we want to have a discussion because I read the rants and raves. I hear about the different people hanging out in different houses, and we are targeting those houses. We are working on getting something done with some of that stuff. But we do have some some youth that I'll probably run at 11 o'clock in the, in the morning, and I'll see them playing in the yard, but then the next thing I know, they're back down here behind the treadmill. You know, but they should be taking classes or they should be doing something, but they're with, it, it's, not, it's not a group that really draws my attention that I need to call Stan and then to go check out because I just you get that feel that, I mean, it's that sixth sense uh, from doing it so long. And so if I saw them out with somebody that's uh, one of the backpack squad that rides around the bikes that are like five sizes too small for them, I would be calling Stan and his officers to go find out what's going on. And like I said, this is, this is the only way that I know to engage the community in a conversation in a, per, a crime prevention attempt. Because after, after your kids are hurt or taken, it's too late. I, want, I just want to have the conversations now before it's too late. I think that uh, the problem is it needs to be more, obviously, after you said you way laid down on the agenda was part of the issue yeah. with the optics of it, which I get it. You're going to draw people in, you want to get people in here to talk about it. Now, what I want to look at, though, is that this is going to be a very, very streamlined situation mm -hmm. because if not you're going to go after those children who are behind walking down by the treadmill probably heading to the shopping basket <laughs> honestly to go get food or whatever so you can't have our police officers and no offense to your other staff who is going to take 20 minutes questioning children because somebody around our ravers one of us drives by and says they look suspicious you know when we have backpack squad running around through town we don't have simple don't have the manpower to actually push this through if you talk to the police department to to, to handle it. Now, I guess what I'm getting at is ultimately would be you want to sit there and you want to make sure that maybe truancy students, you get truancy reports from the school, you put out, I guess, for lack of a better term, a most wanted list for the kids who do take off. Honestly, and that way, these police officers know who to look for instead of just trying to profile random children who happen to be walking to the shopping basket. Sure, and the thing with this, the community is so small, as you brought up, that they probably know the majority of the ones that are, oh, they're homeschooled, that's so-and-so's son or daughter, and I know they're doing virtual. We have that luxury. And and that's why, again, it was brought up, and so we presented to Pat to have him go through it and make sure it was where it was supposed to be just for the first blush and to have these conversations. Uh, right now, if I, if I, my recommendation is the way I'm reading everybody, is to recommend that we not uh, that we table it for further discussion because I want to get your feedback. I want to have input, and if y'all even want something like this in some form, I just need more bullet points. Basically. And, and, so I see where I see where it works. I see where it's bad too. I mean, you catch my kid on the street, you don't do it. Put him back. Put him back. Take him out. Uh, there was a very intelligent man, a lot smarter than anybody I've ever met before. Um, who said that if you're willing to give up basic liberties for temporary safety, you deserve neither liberty nor safety. Here's another aspect though. Yes, ma'am. So if you want to start to give this kid a criminal history, how is that going to affect them in the long run? Okay, well, this is a class C misdemeanor, so it does not go on their criminal history. But it's not a part of their. Our goal is to keep them out of the state. Let me finish my point, though, oh, because sorry. you want to start to looking at these kids, looking at them like they're troublemakers, which, okay, some of them are, but some of them, they just need an extra chance because sure. there's a lot of kids like that. But how, how might you look at the adults that they could be getting themselves into trouble with? I mean, how many drug dealers are in this town? No drug dealers. 
How about you start looking at them instead of just looking at our youth? Well, like I said, this is a form of crime prevention. We're trying to prevent something. We're trying to keep them out of the system because the system is already just inundated with kids and adults across the state. Stan, where are we at currently with the amount of work you do five days a week during school week? We're talking to children or seeing children and putting them back at their homes. Is the need there from a police department standpoint? There, there is. I mean, there's, and I'm not saying all kids in general. I mean, I mean, we know the kids. We know the kids we need to watch out for. I know everybody, I'm probably sure I know everybody's kids in this room. You know, I know they're out to lunch. I know they're going to the golden chick. I know they're going to sign. You know, it's not for that. It's for the kids riding their bikes in the alleys at 9 o'clock in the morning looking at houses. Or well, maybe they need to get busted. Well, that's what, that's what, yeah, honestly, there's a problem. We really don't have that mechanism. We can't do a Terry stop just for the sake of yeah. crime prevention. Okay, yes. I understand you can't do a Terry stop just for the sake of crime, crime prevention. Yes. Is that what you're saying? That's, that's what it's okay. for. You see a kid riding a bicycle at 9 o'clock in the morning. Little needs to be in school, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, if he ain't school, he's true. That's breaking the law. Well, I mean, he, he, and that's where it comes with, you know, that's is he homeschool? Is he virtual learning? You know? Okay. If he's virtual learning, that's okay. That's all fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's... And I, and I understand that. Uh, uh, but see, yeah. that's, that's what we're, we're going with this. What it kind of looks like to me, and I'm not anybody, I don't have any minor children in this town. No. <laughs> I, have one, I had one for about six months, and that was long enough. Oh, <laughs> This looks like first step and something that kind of resembles Nazi communism. If you want to start, hang on just a second. If you want to start taking people's rights away from them, it don't matter whether they're four years old, three years old, two years old, or a full grown adult. When you start taking people's rights away from them, so you, next step, you're going to say, well, you know, uh, everybody over the age of 60, we can't have you down in the park after 2 o'clock in the afternoon because the hookers show up. Okay? I understand that. So is there going to be an ordinance against that? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Where does this stop once it starts spiraling? Well, it's been spiraling for millennia. Uh, so it's been a discussion. It's not new. Curfews are not new. That's correct. They're we, had them when, we had them way back when I was And, and I, I appreciate where you're coming from because this is part of the conversation we're having in one of my classes right now about taking. Where are we at comparison-wise, Bernard? I'm sorry? Places? Where are we at comparison-wise compared to other places our size? You, and you've been there, you've seen them. I have only been here 10 and a half weeks or 11 weeks right. thus far. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't smelled tar and I haven't seen feathers yet, so I'm, I guess it's still okay. But Today. Today. <laughs> yeah. Today. But, you know, in essence, comparing it to the closest thing I'd have to compare it to right now would be I live and Mule Shoe. And probably more so the Mule Shoe than I live, because I live is just right on top of Lubbock. Sure. Uh, East Lubbock at that. And compared to Muleshoe, we are probably in a better place than even Muleshoe is. Uh, when I was asked about this and shown this, okay, I know it, I, I'm familiar with it, I'm comfortable with it because I know, I know what I know from my years of experience and seeing it. Uh, do I? Do I like the fact that we're having to have this conversation? No, ma'am, I'm not. You know, I brought up, I brought a 13 year old into this community. And the one thing I have to say is, is every day I pick him up from school and I ask him, hey son, how was your day? And he actually smiles. And I said, dad, it was a good day. Right. But we can't and punish the, the, the handful and, and ch change all that. Yeah, and so that's why I'm looking at it from the preventive side, and I'm looking to y'all because it's not just my kid, it's not just stands, you know, yeah. it's, it's everybody's. I mean, we, we need to have that, and we need to figure out what we want to do to make sure we're doing what we can to protect our children from those that have already passed into adulthood and are coming after our children because they know that the juvenile system that's the key, is that's what we're starting. Spot. You can ask anybody in this room right here, right now, where the drug houses are in this town. That's where we start. 
And we protect our babies that way, not by locking them down every every afternoon. That's how we it's do it. It's almost like the art. If you've read the if you've read the Art of War, if you want to destroy a community or a nation, who do you go after? You go after their kids, so, and that's what I'm trying to keep. From it. Uh, that's that's what I would get for thirty five years. Sure. So, sure. Yes. Uh, just on principle alone, I mean, we are the freest people in the world. And we are that way because we have the responsibility to act. So as a free people, it is our responsibility to stand up and stop any and all form of governments to encroach on our rights and freedoms. So just off the of general principle alone, making something illegal because it's not good for somebody is not right because it's their choice to be read. Transportation code lately. Oh, yeah. Okay, and there's a whole book that's right a there. Fight that I'm not going to that on that point. But uh, I'm not arguing with you, but I'm just saying, you know, from that point, I appreciate your perspective and what you're saying. However, if you, if you look at the transportation code and some of the other penal laws, you'll see that, unfortunately, that's what. Unfortunately, everyone didn't stand up to stop it. <laughs> I just think we're looking for cause. I think that's kind of the idea here. There's no cause for this at this moment right now. Well, if we're running below average, we, we don't compare to other multiple cities or small cities around us in the same aspect. Stand and show, I mean, he knows, yes. they know who they're looking for. Sure. So in my opinion, with that statement alone, there's no cause yeah. for to, to put this in place. I know we, we always want to be react, proactive versus reactive. I get that. But we're not going to have a major fallout within a week and go, holy crap, we missed a boat on this. No, you know, no. We're going to start to see it when it does get to that point. And at that point in time, we can become reactive. Well, I'd like to stay proactive. In oh, and I, trust me, I'm all about it, but there's yes, times. Sure. Something I'd like to like to know, Stan, you know the guys, the bad guys, right? You know who they are. They got a rest record, right? How well, about, about, let's see some pictures. I haven't seen any place where I can find pictures of these people. That's common knowledge to me. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you can do that with minors. I didn't say yeah. nothing about yeah. minors. I'm talking about the bad guys. The ones running around with the minors. You know, yeah. the, the older ones. Yeah. 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 This is the thing I like about coming out of these conversations is that we can brainstorm different different ideas. And you bringing that up is something I really like because we started with Sweetwater Crime Watch today, and I was one of the administrators on it. And every day they posted who was arrested for what and what calls were handled and those that were arrested we had a thumbnail picture of them. Not very good either. And so, yeah. I mean, Stan, you know, that's something that we might, because if we didn't get the picture that we got from the jail, this is where we got our picture. Well, well and I, we know who to look for and who's looking around our kid and we know yeah. that person doesn't need to be around. You know, if, if I've got their picture and I've got their address and they're cruising my neighborhood, I'm the one sticking the bicycle, sticking the broomstick in the bicycle spokes, <laughs> asking them what you're doing in this neighborhood. Yes, sir. And I'm the kind of individual to do that. But until all of us get on that same page to where we can take control of that situation, then it's going to keep on getting on getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is just if one conversation. If it is brought to light to all of us, then I feel like that say man. Grab all the kiddos. Whack. What's wrong with you, boy? I saw you running around with somebody. You ain't got no sense. Get in your room. You know, that kind of falls back on that's a parent's responsibility. You know, exactly. keep the kid doing what they're supposed to do and not what they're not supposed but to what do. But what if the what if the parent don't know that kid he's in? That's what I'm saying. That's you know what I'm saying. Had, if we now if we had some pictures. We had it on Facebook or social media where we can click on this oh well, yeah, I know they thought I see them around with such and such kids every day. That's not right. You know. But without even without knowledge of who these kids are that are 21, 22 years old, that are not minors anymore, how do we know who is who? He knows, but I don't know. I moved into a neighborhood in South Houston one time, right there off of Luke. Okay? You know right where I'm talking about, don't you? You know those red brick duplexes down there? I really didn't mean one. Pay $200 a month for it. I'm hanging iron downtown. I'm an iron worker. I leave way before daylight and I get home way after dark. Man living next door to me was sitting on his porch when I rolled up there. I rolled up there, opened the door to my place, threw my bags in. I said, I need to ask you two questions. He looked at me and said, okay, what? I said, where's the liquor store? Where's the grocery store? Right then I became his friend. 
Okay? I didn't have to worry about locking my place. Because that was the neighborhood watch. And when the bad guys decided that they were going to move into that apartment complex and that duplex complex, duplex area, mm -hmm. and you know which one I'm talking about. When the bad guys decided they was going to move in down there, they moved in. They moved in and started telling everybody what they was going to do and everything else. One night, it didn't work out that way. Okay? Yeah. And the reason it didn't work out that way is because everybody knew what was going on. And everybody got together and said, no, you ain't coming to our hood and telling us what to do. This is our hood. These are our children. You don't have to go. And you can go one a couple, a couple of different ways, but you don't have to go. Oh. Until until the neighborhood and the people take back their community, it's going to keep rolling this way. You know and what I'm saying? Really like what I'm and we need the tools. We need the tools to do that. Identification is a tool. Yes, sir. You know, yeah. and if I saw, if I saw one of y'all's kids running around with bad room people, I'd roll over and say, "Man, I need to talk to you for a minute." Call them by name. They come over and talk to you. Say, "Say, bro, you know who you run with? You know, you know, roll with me." I'm headed to such and such. Get the car. Yeah. Give them, it's, it's a skip mechanism. Get, get them away from that and take them home. That's right. And I, I like what I'm hearing. I really do. Walk them down for nine minutes out of the year. I won't do it. Oh, those are the best way on it. I want to commend everyone that's here right now because you are concerned parents. We don't see that very often. And uh, I hate to say it, but I've been here 37 years. Ballinger, when I first moved here, was an excellent town. Everybody wanted to live here. Right now, it's an empty. We're the same way. We grew, just, up here. Uh, we grew up here. We know how to do it. Right? Exactly. We know how to kind of change in the last four years. Exactly. You know? And that's and you know, why you're not seeing the type of people we're talking right. about here defending their rights mm -hmm. because they know that they're wrong. And they're the ones that are. And I hate to say it, they're the ones that are raising the kids that are going to be in trouble in the judiciary. Well, we're going out and not locking your doors. I'm not worried about yeah. nothing. Go out. You know, so when they have come to home. I used to not lock my door when yeah. we first lived here. I don't leave the house. I don't leave the house right now without locking it. Yeah. Friends my little head up with your mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let, let me say something. Just say something. And I know, I know where all y'all are coming from. And I think there's probably a way or a system that we can devise whether it's through us or whether it's through the county or whatever, uh, prevention for this or determined for it. I think, like Brian was saying, and like we've been, you know, about the photos. You know, if we know what, like I said, if you know who you look like, then you either stay away from them or if you encounter them and they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing legally and they're right. not searching your house or looking around your house, then you've got something to deal with. But to, to overlook that part of it is a, is a travesty. And this is where we really have to come together. I'm not saying we're become vigilantes, but I say we become aware of what needs to be done or what can be done, bringing our law enforcement online with it, bringing everybody else, I mean, even the city employees, you know, just as well as anybody else of what a city employee can do if they're <coughs> out there working and they see somebody that's riding on these little bicycles with a backpack on and they're always using the same route every day, you know good well what they're doing. And the easiest way to try and get it stopped is to have somebody following them and have them, you know, one of these days they're going to get caught. But we can be better again. Uh, but it's going to take everybody working and it's going to take getting the ones that have come in to try and take over, deter. And that's just my personal Again, mostly not minors, though. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Well, yeah, the ones that are But at the same time, the parents of these minors, and I'm going this from what we had to deal with in the school system, and Ken knows just as well as I do, that's the hardest one to deal with, and it's, it's gone rampant over the last number of years of the type of people that have moved in that don't care about their kids, don't care if they're going to school, don't care if they're eating home, in school, in town, they just like don't care. Well, instead of creating a new ordinance, then we back the truancy ordinances. We go back to yeah. we go to our court and say, 
Okay, well, true to law, we go to our courts and our police officers and say, we bust them on this, we take them where they got to go. Compulsory attendance stuff has changed dramatically, and who's the court that handles that? Is it the municipal or the JP? Oh, there's not a variance in law anymore. No. Maybe we start there. Compulsory attendance is what's under this law. So, under this law. So who they file the cases with? The municipal courts or the JP? Okay. Answer, answer. We start there. there. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. The law that's already in effect. Yeah. Compulsory attendance is already in effect. It yeah. used to be the truancy law, but they changed it to compulsory Let's work attendance. the laws we have, and then if they do not work, we can create new ordinances to back those laws up. And like, like I said, this is... Yeah, no, it's pretty serious. Not like more gun laws. Yeah, more gun laws going to keep people from getting shot. Right. Okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. Yeah. <laughs> Capital fund. That's your conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I like this idea we talked about in this coming down with having to be a thumbnail picture from something. Yeah, we go. Love that. Oh, okay. I'm a retired person. I live over the hill north of it. I see these kids coming up and down the street, going to school, coming from school, and everything. And many times I've stopped and I've wondered this car stopped and these kids talk to them, and all of a sudden they're in the car and they're gone. Who is I, you know, it makes me wonder sometimes, maybe if I had some kind of a thumbnail idea and I could recognize this person, maybe I could You're right. get that child not to get right. in that car. You, know, you live on San Rodeo, and it's a busy street with kids in there. I mean, it's... Yeah. 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 after school, mm -hmm. they stay for a little bit running track or whatever, even after school. They run up and down that street. Right. Well, I'm home a lot, and I see this, and I see cars... When I see cars continuing to make the block, to me, they're casing the joint, if you will. Mm -hmm. And right. I pay attention to it. It's suspicious. Mm -hmm. And I pay a lot of attention to it. And the lady and I were living over in the same. And, and there. I'm the kind of guy to walk out in front of and take a picture of the exactly. license plate and walk off. See. Exactly. <laughs> That's the time. <laughs> but I, I try and pay attention to it. I don't like you, Danny. I don't like you. It don't matter how big you are. It don't matter really. It don't matter how big you are. If you make a presence, a known presence, they will leave you alone. Because more than likely, they don't want to cause trouble because they know that they'll all be gone. And so, well, I don't know. Uh, if a kid is, I know they have an in-school suspension that you never can. If a kid is expelled, are they actually expelled out of school, or they go to that alternative school? They have EAP, which is the alternative school in San Angelo. They have in school suspension and they have out of school suspension, which means they're home for a certain number of days. Either they come back to school or they'll go to the alternative school. But you know, the determination of where they're going to be and how they're going to be placed, that's handled in the school itself. Okay. So they don't have that ADP at the old junior high where they no. used to? No, they don't have that. I think that would be a coordinator it's between the school and the police department. department. It's called Fairview, yeah. which is the alternative school. Yeah. <clears throat> but you would need coordination between the school and the police department for this actually to work. So yeah. they understand who is on the suspension, who should be where mm -hmm. at all times. But Stan is right, because when I first started teaching here, we could take kids and their families to court if they weren't coming to school, sure. which can't do that anymore. The most you can do is deny them credit. Do they have to make up the time? She, or they and that's what we need to put back in the place. It's still on the book. 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 Compulsory attendance where we can get to work like in Sweetwater. It's so probably thing we'll have to do is Stan will have to follow up with Mr. Bud to make sure whoever the the consult the, the attendance clerks are at the various campuses know that that's still a, an applicable and viable statute, and then they need to know which court to follow it. See, because if I I have to go back to what I know yeah. in Sweetwater, it ended up all everything went to JP Court now. It doesn't come to the municipal court anymore. And you'll shoot, it went to the municipal court. And some places it goes to a family court because they're trying to get it in front of the family court because you have a county court of law. Right. They're getting in front of that multi county or multi jurisdictional county, a CCL judge who's a, an actual attorney. 
and they're trying to work and restore that family unit and keep them out, as a family and a juvenile out of the system instead of putting them into the system. Right. We're all trying to find a way to keep the kids out of the system because we know Right. Historically, when we put kids in the system, they some mean, not good things happen. Pat, where do they need your new kids? And Coleman is, they prosecute a lot of trends, and I said call trends, he calls your insurance case. School files a, a report. Uh, it's usually against the parent. The kid can't be held right. in prison for a while. Right. Um, you know, they can get in trouble, but they're not going to get, but the parent is called with them, and they're, they're potentially charged with the class two misdemeanor. Um, they bring both of them in, and in every case, we do the district court, and you know, typically, you know, we usually just meet with them and find out what's going on, tell them, listen, if you don't change, you know, they're already gonna lose the credit already, and they, well, that's another issue, but as far as making a criminal out of anybody, including the parent, we usually, you know, we err on the side of conservatism, but we tell them, look, you gotta get your kid in school, Kids that benefit from school, and I, I haven't had a, we had a few parents that were slow to respond, but they all responded in a positive way. The kids eventually go back. Where will we find that here? Where does where does that book? The, the school district has to be the one to file the complaint. Yeah, basically, once they file the complaint, we have only I think it's ten days to for me to review it and actually file the suit. File the I know it would be a virtual, right? They have to be in attendance virtual. Yes, you yes. just do attendance virtual. But we probably haven't had a court case for Trinity in five or six years. Yeah. So that means we do it all the time. But we don't even I've never had one in Brown over 22 years. I've never had one in Brown. And so, Coleman. So is this something that's just slipping through the wire? It's just probably depends on the school district. And no, no, that's not what, that's that's not what I'm asking. Hmm? Is this something that's slipping through the wire? Because if it's, oh, well, it's just the school district. Well, kiss my whatever school district. If your school district's not doing what they're supposed to be doing, well, then, see, then what, what seems to be the issue? They handle a way. We, most school districts have a current officer or a person assigned to it. I'm, I got a bad word. I dealt with one. Well, so, frequently. Mike, you were 15 years ago. I mean, how much you heard about the truancy laws through that? Well, when I was, oh, like it's been a few years now since I've been there. I don't know if they've changed sure. or whatever, but there were many times that they reported and prosecuted the parents, mm -hmm. and that was an active process. Mm -hmm. the, the problem being, even beginning at that point, was like I was mentioning a while ago, all these people that don't give a flying flip, mm -hmm. and they don't care if they're prosecuted or not. They'll get a flying and flip and say, pocket, but you get stolen. Yeah. Yeah. We keep prosecuting. There's prosecute. only so much you can do. I mean, you can go in there and charge them for you know, compulsory you know, attendance. Sure. And if they don't do that, they'll charge them again. And, and they just flat don't care. I think that's our first step is that locking down our minds. Yeah. That's a better and then start. next thing you know, yeah. they'll say, well, they're going to homeschool yeah. or go somewhere else. And the kid's not going to get an education because they're sure not going to teach them. So that's, that's the first thing you need to do when you start. You know, getting on the parents about the kids not coming. First thing they say, well, we'll homeschool. Yeah. You know, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against those that are actually homeschooling their kids. This but don't you, have, do, don't you have to have, when you homeschool a kid, don't you have to have records of their right. progress? And, no. Yeah. No. 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 Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I don't call my son. You have to send in the state of Texas every year, yes. But yeah, you got to keep, you got to keep, you got to keep, you know, they don't have nothing to do with school, no. So stay tight, you got to them in. Yeah. So well, you got to go through a whole other thing. Well, they still have to pass the uh, tax tax. Yes, the yeah. Some of them are. I mean, well, you are. Oh, my wife is. But yeah, she has to keep up with it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mayor, Council, I would strongly recommend that we table this for further uh, discussion and uh, look at other options and continue to work with our community partners on uh, how we better conserve our, uh, our community and our youth. I make a motion that we table the consideration of the ordinance amending the minor curfew ordinance by prohibiting minors from being in any public place during the school hours. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Uh, can I make one recommendation with that? When you do bring it back on the agenda, can we have some type of bullet point that you want to run down so that we don't have people losing their minds over a vague blanket like statement? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we know to show up and listen. A handful of folks know to show up and listen that you're going to discuss it. Some people will not. And that's fine if they're on, but hey, we're going to look at it again, and here's what we're going to actually discuss. I've already had a week this year with somebody anyway. I've had one person say, hey, can I see my read it? I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I suggest that we don't make it an action item. Sure. There is a discussion. discussion. And okay. That way we can have a good discussion and decide how we want to take it. And you're going to be up for a vote anyway at that point. Yeah. So. Very good. Thank you. I appreciate you standing up and sharing with us what you feel and what you think about what we put out. Uh, that's how the system works. That's how our system works from top to bottom. And we have to hear from y'all. Yes, ma'am. That's what I'm here for. So. Okay, so the motion was carried for that to be tabled, that action item. And at this time, do we have a motion from the adjournment of the meeting? Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. Meeting is adjourned at 619. Thank you guys for showing up. Thank you. Thank you.